oh my God, finally, AT&T is going to let third-party user-generated content into the platform. Um, this is going to be amazing. When you watch the whole thing, what you find is that that's not the case. That's not what John was referring to. You're not bundling up the fragmented supply. You're bundling up the compartmentalized buckets. You've got the eyeballs and the users. It's really about using that in a slightly different way and embracing uh, more kind of non-traditional TV yeah. type content in a way that gives you leverage, network effects, and better economics. Our friend Ben Thompson was talking about this interview. John Stanky was heading up Time Warner, the, the, the business that AT&T bought for $100 billion, which owns HBO and a number of other things. Um, now he's been promoted to COO, I think of like eight of all AT&T. Anyway, he was in this interview with Recode. Um, and, and what, what Ben quoted was a line where he said that they would let other content that AT&T doesn't own to be allowed to come into HBO Max's, uh, you know, streaming, um, uh, product. I'm not going to call it a platform because it's not a platform. And so that little quote loses the context. My mind was like, oh my God, finally, AT&T is going to let third-party user-generated content into the platform. Um, this is going to be amazing. And uh, you know they're getting this fragmented supply, which they have a lot of leverage over, and this is really going to work. Well, when you watch the whole thing, what you find is that that's not the case. That's not what John was referring to. What he was referring to was to let other large media players right, like licensing other TV shows and that kind of stuff bundle their stuff in like maybe I don't know if Comcast he was talking about Comcast Xander and but you know uh, other large media companies could then put their products into or through HBO Max that I would assume you have to pay an incremental fee for and right. all these kinds of things so that's what he was talking about I'll just play a little clip here and we can kind of dissect it a little bit. Yes, we fully expect that once the AVOD environment goes up, that it's not just going to be our content and our avails and inventory that's in that environment. So we very much would love this platform over time to receive content from others as well as inventory from others to go with that content. That's where that value proposition comes back through Xander. The way Xander operates today, it continues to have firewalls that are set up internally just like any other wholesale business would have to ensure that it's done on a level playing field. Um, whether I don't want to prognosticate on behalf of Comcast as to whether or not they'll be comfortable with that, but there certainly are others out there beyond Comcast who can bring inventory and content in that uh, may find it to be an acceptable arrangement. Clearly, Comcast has been investing in an ad tech stack of their own. Um, I expect they're gonna to continue to try to push that business forward. And that's why when we started, and we talked about this being a foot race over the next couple of years to gain scale on a platform. It's one example of why I think it's so important. So non Warner Media media companies would be able to have their content, their shows or movies distributed within. Would HBO. fully expect that the platform at some point in time is a platform that we allow others to bring content into. I don't think from my point of view, we're ever going to have uh, a lock or a monopoly on creativity. And, you know, I think you've, there's been a number of articles actually written the last couple of weeks about the frustration and the fragmentation of the bundle and what's going to happen. Uh, we're basically unbundling to rebundle. At some point, there will be platforms that re aggregate and rebundle. And we'd like the platform ultimately to be a place where reaggregation occurs. And that doesn't just mean our content. There is a future where they look at all the content has now kind of been unbundled, where you used to get a one cable subscription and you would have. Now um, everyone has their own streaming service. Now everyone has their own yeah. streaming service. That's the unbundling. And there's a future state where there is bundling again. The difference is that you're not bundling up the fragmented supply, you're bundling up the compartmentalized buckets. Right. Uh, from HBO or the five to, to ten different media Amazon, players. I mean, Amazon already does this. You can subscribe to CBS All Access and those things. I don't think you can do Disney Plus yet, but the, the, they have other channel streaming services. You can subscribe through to Am, uh, to Amazon through Amazon to these other services. Right. Uh, I believe Apple wants to do the same thing with TV Plus and basically yes. use that as like a beachhead to facilitate these other things. So that they're not alone. 
in wanting to do this. I think the economics in that are tough because it's not really, again, it's not really a platform model. It's like we have a few partnerships that we are channel partners and sell these things for these folks. I mean, if that's the future of it, then, 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 then the platforms, the true platform companies, basically Apple and Google win that, you know, we haven't even seen really Google go that aggressively, but it comes down to like Apple music versus Spotify and Apple gets its 30% right. additional take rate. Cause it has, a cleaner user experience to let you buy digital content. And that's the play. And you're at a serious disadvantage. What you need to do is find that fragmented supply amongst the user generated p- providers. Okay. You know, can you give me access to HBO type of content and let me create derivative content off of that? Can you let all these kind of like uh, influencers on different content platforms co-create or, or give me content that I put let, through my let, pipes. Uh, some of these media personalities, actors, producers, others create a following on there. And mm-hmm. maybe you've watched their big TV show, which is licensed, you know, or bought by HBO and shown through HBO Max. But then they have some kind of smaller project and they do that on their own and they want to showcase that too. There's a lot of different models in which you can do this, but you've got the relationship with the premium content. You've got the eyeballs and the users. It's really about using that in a slightly different way and embracing yep. uh, more kind of non-traditional TV yep. type content yep. in a way that gives you leverage, network effects, and better economics. Yeah, and I'd say, and doing it within like one to two years, not three to five. <laughs> and right. you know, you need to do it now. Just like if you're a retailer, you need to have millions of additional SKUs now, not in three to five years. Um, You've got to go get that fragmented supply ASAP because otherwise the tech platform monopolies, that's beat their, you. That's right. what they do. That's literally what they do. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how this plays out. I was like potentially very excited from the snippet I read and then I watched it and um, lost some of that excitement. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.